Hey folks, Joseph Faces War here. Yes, I'm wearing my brand new Marvel t-shirt. Yeah, because I love superheroes, as you all know, but it looks really awesome. You can see all these characters around, like Spider-Man, as well as the Hulk, Daredevil, Thor, Cap Captain America, Iron Man, Black Panther. You can even see uh, Hawkeye, uh, Doctor Strange, I think that's Black Riddle right there. Even Ant Man's in there. <laughs> so, very nice shirt. Got that at Target um, during my birthday. I'm, I showed you this before when I did that video. Now, I, I know it's been a week. Hey, I needed to take some time. I had to go to the doctor to get a blood test. Don't worry, it's negative. It's okay. I'm not going to get caught by the COVID-19. I hope not, because I don't want that. But I've been gaining weight, though, because I haven't been able to have a chance to go to the gym or anything. But I hope I do. Um, I was mostly, of course, posting commercial breaks as usual. It seems like I post more commercial breaks than movie reviews. But then again, I had to keep hearing all these other videos in the background of my room because they always keep putting the volume too loud for my sister's room. And then they sometimes put a lot of stuff uh, pretty loud, so I, I just never have a chance to record. I don't, don't want to get caught by the YouTube stupidity copyright uh, laws. I mean, I'm tired of that. I mean, I, I even had to struggle to post one commercial break yesterday, which I had to do a re-upload because it blocked the entire video worldwide, and I didn't want that to happen, so I had to remove a few commercials to, to make it work. And I, I hate that. But anyway, with that aside, um, I wanted to review a movie that I just picked up recently at Best Buy uh, two weeks ago, because I do want to get some more movies nowadays and watch them. Uh, but I have seen this movie before, and it's nice to revisit it again. I just haven't reviewed the film yet. It's called Your Name simply your name. <laughs> I guess you could say this is a Japanese anime film that's just like the film Big, vice versa, like Father Like Son, 13 going on 30. It's a body switching movie but which it focuses on two genders, uh, both from high school. Yeah, one is a boy, the other is a girl. They live in two separate towns, uh, they're separate strangers, that all of a sudden they switch bodies, you know, going from one place to the other. Like, she's in his world, and he's in her world. You know, he lives in a city, she lives in a world town, you know, where the shrine is at. Yeah, a very small town. Going for... Japanese culture and all. And it happened during this particular um, one day, maybe even a week, you know, ever since this meteor that, that hits uh, Japan. It's a very uh, special movie. Um, it's from director uh, Makoto Shinkai. Um, I guess if some people out there are familiar with. Um, he gave us films like Five Centimeters Per Second and Voices of a Distant Star, among many others. Um, however, i never seen any of his work, but I did actually saw his filmography on the Blu-ray, which is included um, for the features right here on the back. Yeah. And it's a very nice slip cover. Um, I'm going to take it out. Back. <laughs> you can see right here those two Blu ray and DVD combo. 
Um, maybe I can see if I can get this, uh, this cover out. It's a reversible cover art. You can see what it looks like here. With the characters. It's very nice. I put this on my best list in 2016. I believe, or, or I think it was 2017, um, well either way. When I first saw this movie, I really um, admired it, I mean mostly because of its familiar theme. And it also plays out like a time warp too, because this is where the boy actually discovers about this uh, young girl that they both met uh, while they were at the subway train. and. And they figure he, he wanted to find out uh, who she is. And I figured this was something I'd never seen before. Even though it has this, the familiar um, formula. And I guess even for this director, I think he's been known for doing mostly, uh, you know, characters that are distance away from each other. And they're trying to find a way to get back at them, or even if they never met before. I guess that's what his uh, genre really is. It's also considered to be the highest grossing film in Japan, which I find this really interesting too because um, I know they have put out a lot of movies in Japan, uh, especially Japanese anime films that could actually make it big. Sometimes they can end up making it small. I mean, because I know here in America, we often get a lot of films that could be the highest grossing film. I mean, sometimes it could be an anime, I mean, an animated film, or other times it could just be an actual film from different genres. Like, it could be a superhero, or perhaps any other movie that could be considered as a blockbuster. You know, like, it could be an action film or so. But indeed, this movie was um, a bigger hit, and surprisingly enough, uh, it became a bigger hit in China. So it kind of went through other countries around, so making this the most popular film of them all. So popular that they might do a live-action remake, um, which they're planning on doing one uh, sometime uh, later on. I mean, already with this coronavirus on the way. Uh, yeah, the, in fact, um, I heard that um, producer J.J. Abrams is um, is looking forward to doing um, an adaptation of this movie, where it's basically going to be quite different from the film itself, which is going to be where they're going to have a uh, an American and a Native American, both uh, a boy and a girl. And it was going to be directed by uh, Mark Webb, same director who gave us 500 Days of Summer and the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And it's going to be written by Eric uh, Heisender. So it sounds pretty interesting, but I'm not so sure how this is going to turn out. Anyway, let's uh, begin with the movie Your Name. And I know because there's both English dub versions, and it can go to certain languages too. But we also have Japanese uh, voice actors, so I'm going to start right here. Starting with um, Japanese, it stars Wakunu Soke Kamiki Mone Kamashalawashi Wayo Narita. Aiko Yuki Nokobanaka Shimazaki Keitio Aushakawa Asami Nakosawa Isuku Ichikara Kana Tari uh, Masaki Terasama Sakaya Ohawa, Ohawa, sorry, and Kanaka Hangasawa. 
Um, the English dub version is Michael Simitamamakas. I don't know if I said it right. And I know I do have some trouble with names with the Japanese uh, actors, so forgive me on that. Stephanie Shea, who I believe um, did some other voice acting for other shows, even Cartoon Network shows, if you're familiar. Uh, Kyle Hebert um, does some voice acting for shows like Dragon Ball, as well as Bleach. And, oh, and yes, uh, even Stephanie Shea also did some voice acting for Bleach, too. <laughs> okay. Cassandra Morris um, mostly did a uh, educational video series called Real World Science, among some others. Uh, ben Ponsky, Ray Chase, Laura Post, Glynis uh, Elias, Katie Harvey, Scott Williams, Michelle Ruff, and Katie Vaughn. It's um, written and directed by Makoto Shinkai. The movie began set in a small town called Itamore, Japan, which is near the Haida region. It's a place where you actually have an island that's a beach that's near the cliffs here with several uh, small houses, apartments, um, a lot of um, places around. They even have a high school and all. Uh, that's where we meet a young high school girl named Mishoha Miyamasu who lives with her grandmother along with her younger sister which their mother had died of a long-term illness and her father had left them because he wasn't getting along with her grandmother over certain things and decided to move on his own for businesses, politics, and all. Most of the time, uh, Mishuha just spends time with her friends, um, Tessie, <laughs> which he's a construction machinery and an equipment experiment. He looks exactly like me with the short hair. He's a tall guy. And her other friend, a very nervous girl works in a broadcast club in high school named Sayaka. So they just hang around together, you know, doing the usual stuff, you know, like, you know, broadcast or, you know, just play games or do some schoolwork and all. And then most of the time they would just hang around, you know, having a drink and help everything out, that, that sort of thing. Also, she helps out with the family, too, you know, with her grandmother, explaining other stuff, too, all these rituals and all, and the shrine. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, Japan, we meet a high school boy named Taki Tashibana, who uh, just hangs around at high school with his buddies. Um, Named um, Shinta and uh, Tusukasa. And of course, they end up uh, colleagues and they go out to like cafes, you know, just have some desserts or have some food. But they also work at a local Italian restaurant. Yes, they have one in Japan. Um, you're probably assuming it'd be like a sushi place or so, but no, this is different. Um, apparently, um, he meets, um, which happened to be his friend, named Miki. And that's where, apparently, well, Taki suddenly had an, a bit of an awkward uh, relationship with her, if that was the case, but we're going to get to that. <laughs> uh, therefore... Both of them had accidentally met, strangely, I mean, when they went to the train station uh, during that one time, only to find out who this person's names are. Well, I know we already know for ourselves. And all of a sudden, because there was a comet that actually hits 
you know, with the meteor showers and all in Japan uh, during this particular festival, and also because there was a report that was going around that uh, this one meteor was about to hit, all of a sudden they started switching bodies. Uh, Taki wants up in Mishuha's body, and Mishuha wants up in Taki's body. So going in different worlds here. <laughs> um, Taki woke up inside Mishuha's body, you know, feeling uh, her boobs, you know, his entire uh, body, um, his entire feminine body, you know, the posture and the legs and all, only to realize that he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that's where we see um, her younger sister cu coming up, waking her up, knowing that he has to get ready to go to school. And apparently she spotted uh, her uh, touching her breasts and was ready to get dressed and just have some breakfast with their grandmother, you know, some rice, and then finally headed off to high school where Taki inside Mishiha's body is just discovering a lot of things like doing all these school works and doing all this other fun activities and even hanging around with these two buddies of hers. Yeah. That sort of thing. Uh, Taki, on the other hand, wants up inside... Well, while Mishoha, on the other hand, wants up inside Taki's body and doing exactly what he's doing. You know, hanging around with his buddies, you know, going to the restaurant uh, to work as, as a waiter, serving all the guests and all. When all of a sudden, one guest actually took a utility knife and just slashes... Um, Miki's dress, which then, because already, you know, both of them are acting completely peculiar and awkwardly, that parent, that at that point on, you know, they had to fix everything that they can, they had to do everything their ways, so they're not exactly who they are, <laughs> but going back to that, uh, Taki actually fixed, um, yeah, sorry, Michelle, fix uh, Mickey's uh, dress, you know, by sewing it, creating like a, a very perfect picture. And then since then, it's getting to the point where now Taki is about to, well, or at this rate, Miki is about to fall in love with Taki and they're ready to have a, a date with each other. So, wow. <laughs> what are the odds here? But then, um, so at that point on, yeah, Taki wants to develop a relationship with his co-worker, Miki, and then Taki, while well, Taki causes Michiha to become popular in school. So everything seems in a, a freaky Friday type of way. But it's not Friday. <laughs> it could be like any other day of the week. Although, suddenly, on one day, as Taki, well, with Mishuha, he accompanies that her grandmother and sister had to leave the ritual alcohol, Kamamasake, which is made by Mishuha, as an offering for the family shrine on the mountaintop outside the town, which the shrine believes that the body of the village guardian gods um, represents through the human experience and connections. So that leads to this uh, the discussion on body switching in a way. So Mishuha's latest notes actually told Taki about a comet known as Tayama that expected to pass Earth on the day of her town festival. So that means that for this particular celebration, this is going to be one major event that's going to end up, and shocking to say, a tragedy. 
And that's what happened the next day when Taki woke up in his own body and now he's beginning to find out the search of what's happening to Mishoha. Just after having an unsuccessful date with Miki, he tries to call Mishoha but he cannot reach her at all and all the body switching had ended completely. So he decided to meet her directly in person but not knowing what the town's name is and has to reply on his memories of the scenery of what it looked like. So he had, so he's joining in with Miki and his friend uh, by uh, meeting a restaurant owner in Haida to recognize what Itamore is through Take's sketch because he actually sketched all the entire uh, village to see what it looks like and he actually told them that yes the comet did hit through this town killing 500 people it was one of the biggest tragedies of them all and, and he's probably assuming that maybe Mishuha might be alive but sad to say she was one of the victims that were killed I mean, in disbelief, I mean, he had to go to the library, finding out all the information and all, and then try to discover the sites where it all happened by going all the way down to the shrine to drink uh, Mitsuha sake from a bottle. Yeah, it was like hidden directly down to the hole of the cave here. And suddenly, that's where he begins to see all the memories that happened begins to see uh, Mishoha and then you see all these other distant memories around like how they both accidentally met at the subway train station and then all of a sudden he woke up and then wants up running around into this giant hole you can see the sunlight or starlight that's already you know sparkling through this distance he runs around and that's where he spots Mishoha, just as Mishoha was about to go after him. And they finally met together until they find a way to actually go inside her body to fix everything that happened in the past you know, through, through those years. So now, for one last time, uh, Taki inside Mishuha is inside her body, woken up and beginning to warn everyone, the entire town, even the, his grandmother, even her grandmother and her sister, that there's going to be a comet that's going to that's going to go straight down into town, and they want her to have everyone evacuate as soon as possible. You know, during the preparation of the town's festival, trying to you know fix something that happened before but will never happen again. So her so her plan, well for Taki's sake, was to help um, her friends to actually um, go all the way to the electrical substation to this to destroy it and disable it and broadcasting a false emergency alert while Taki assumes Mishaha's role as the mayor's daughter to persuade him to evacuate the entire town for everyone. Realizing that Mishaha is in his body at the shrine, Taki goes back to find her. I mean, with Tessie and Sakaya to help, you know, contact with everyone around to go back into their homes. So they'd be safe from this comet. Um, Mishuha walks up in Taki's body at the shrine. Just when Taki reaches right there as the sun rises. The two sense each other's presence. But then all of a sudden it's beginning to fade away. Now trying to write down their names. Uh, or even writing down I love you. And it's starting to 
slowly fade away and now they're beginning to have trouble remembering their names or everything else and but that's probably what happened when the twilight falls which is known as the magic hour and when they finally return to their own bodies and meet again they they write their names hoping that they'll be able to remember from time even though twilight passes as soon as possible and then suddenly all their memories are distanced to fade and and then next thing you know um, for the evacuation the comet pieces have crashed to earth destroys the entire town Taki wakes up in his own time only to remember particularly nothing but then as five years have passed that's when he began to find out that pretty much everyone survived for this comet and then he was trying to find out what happened to Mishoha and then all of a sudden because already you know Taki had just graduated from high school same goes with Mishoha and her high school and they move around they just they just had some new jobs some new places and all and then suddenly in this brief um, ending well the climax but then suddenly in this climax all of a sudden both Mishoha and Taki had finally met after all these years just by going up to the stairwell and revealing their names so they'll be able to remember while shedding into tears for joy beautiful. It's a miraculous masterpiece. Uh, I really enjoy the uh, the aspects of blending in with um, body switching and um, a time warping type of story. Um, it's a coming of age but it's also a fantasy that really works. They blend in with comedy elements in there but it can also be a drama and it's very sad at times but it's it's a movie about you know connecting with one or the other between two genders who they never met until they went to the trade station and then suddenly they're finding a way to meet again be able to know who they are and hoping they'll be able to well fall in love and that's what this film really achieves. The animation is stunningly beautiful. In fact, this was actually done, hard to believe, by a storyboard for Toon Boom, the, the software that they use, which is from Canada. And they actually use some digital uh, animation, even though it's it's use a, a bit of a hand-drawn technique and you know, blending in with the characters and the real-life locations of those cities I mean you can definitely spot exactly what Tokyo and um, Ichimori why or Itamori looks like in animation form I mean they, they put they blend in a lot of details in there you can even see all the buildings, you know, like you see all these. There's like one building that actually has uh, the Tower Records. Yeah, there's Tower Records in Japan. You can even see the all these products names like Sony, Samsung, uh, Toshiba, Panasonic, and all, um, and all these other restaurants and other places too. You can see a lot of detail there. And they go to like certain places too, like like they go to the uh, Yosuya Station, you know, the subway station, and the pedestrian bridges, the um, the shunk, the all these other certain areas that they they put together to make it look um, really unique. 
there are a lot of sweet moments there. Um, like there was a scene where inside uh, Taki's body for Mitsuha, she, she wanted to go to Tokyo so bad. I mean, she winds up going inside a local cafe to try out these delicious desserts and just taking pictures of them. You know, like pretty much every delicious dessert that he has. <laughs> and then, and also certain things too. I mean, like already has Taki, you know, just serving all the guests around, you know, trying to get to know uh, Miki, which I know they went on the date, isn't as perfect as they were hoping it would be. They're just going around exploring at the uh, the museum, maybe just hanging around to certain places they want to go to, that sort of thing. And <laughs> or at this point on, you know, Taki as Misha Ha just going around playing basketball and winning all these games and you know doing all these awkward. Um, Scenes like he just spreads uh, her legs and doing exactly the way men do, <laughs> but it just seems like yeah they're gonna show her, well, her upskirt, or just uh, <laughs> show uh, her female body expressions here and there. <laughs> just just strange, I know. And yeah, of course, I mean, there's even a moment, too, when they finally met each other, that's where Michihoff calls him a pervert, you know. You hear this all the time in anime, they always find them a pervert. Yeah, because they're always leering in and all. Whatever. Um, also, Matakato Shakai, who, um, I actually wanted to do this particular story as an inspiration to several stories that's been done already. Because I know this is not the first time they ever did a, um, a switching gen uh, gender swapping story before. I mean, they did that with Rama and a Half, so this was an inspiration to that. Uh, they joined in with Itsai Mari, uh, along with... Uh, Greg Egon's short story, The Safe Deposit Box. And I find it hard to believe, but even Interstellar was an influence to this movie. But I'm kind of amazed that he didn't do an inspiration to all the other body switching movies. You know, like Big, 13 Going on 30, Vice Versa, Like Father Like Son, 18 Again, among others, e even Freaky Friday. But I guess in a way, you know, he really wanted to, after all the works he's been doing in the past, I mean, I, he also did tend to blend in similar stories to those. I would definitely like to check those out someday if I have to. Um, it it actually all come together. And I, I love the, the look and feel, the atmosphere, uh, the shots of the, the meteor, you know, all the, going all the way down from the sky. I mean, you can see all, all these meteor showers already shooting down. I mean, that, and it just looks so beautiful the way they did this. You know, with the star and its uh, beautiful st starlights that you have. You know, the twilight stars and all that blend in. You know, even for both um, daylights. And night time, I mean, it just faster speed too. Like, like it goes from day to to night, and through the city. I thought that just looks breathtaking. You know, for those speeds. Anyway, <laughs> but getting back to the main characters, Taki and Mishaha, they may not have nothing in common with each other, but seeing that they only met once. And hoping that sooner or later they'll be able to meet again, even if they had to take a couple years to find each other. Um, they're very quirky. They can be awkward, but deep down of it, they can be very caring. Just your average 
high school uh, student right there. But joining in with their friends and all, I mean, it takes a lot of time just to see with each other and, and having to see exactly what it would have been like if they were in their world. Like if I would imagine if I end up switching bodies with a female and, and then suddenly I want up inside this particular female body, I'm like, wow. And then I end up doing everything she does. And then this female will end up going into my body and she'll probably end up doing everything I do. <laughs> that would be something. I mean, the way we, we see it. So I kind of like how they did the gender swapping here. Also, the music um, is wonderful. It has a bit of a indie uh, alternative rock uh, feel to it. It's done by a Japanese uh, rock band called Wad Wimps. You know, kind of a weird name, but it sounds really incredibly rad. But it, it blends the, the songs together. All wonderful. Even with the score that they put into it. Um, it has a lot of qualities of fantasy blending with drama, comedy, and all. But it's a very important story. And the cinematography, editing, and all were all done directly from the same writer and director. So he knows exactly how he captures um, the spirits, and how he captures uh, the locations, and how he captures this particular story here. And you got to give him credit for that. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't, so with that aside, even if you're not a anime fan or not, I suggest you should check this out. It's definitely the perfect formula for everyone. Hell, even if you love um, body switching movies, this is it. Because you'll never see anything like it. I mean, maybe you will, but that's exactly how you all feel passion at all. <laughs> so anyway, that's your name, because everybody knows your name. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the quote from the song from the TV series Cheers. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.